Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Glasses. In this video, we are going to perform a lab activity related to the determination of heat capacity of a calorimeter. This experiment has also been given with the aim to determine the water equivalent of calorimeter in several textbooks. So both are having same meanings, only the formula is different, right? So here in this video, first we are going to understand what is called heat capacity and how it is related to the heat and then we are going to perform a lab activity so here is the heat capacity so the heat capacity of a system is its capacity to absorb heat and store energy as the system absorbs heat the atoms or the molecules of the system starts vibrating or their kinetic energy increases this increased kinetic energy raises the temperature of the system this can be given with the relationship c is equal to q upon t2 minus t1 so here what is this q and what is this t2 and minus t1 so q is in calories which is heat absorbed by the system to raise the temperature from t1 to t2 thus the heat capacity of the system is given by this expression but the unit of this heat capacity is given in joule per kelvin per mole if we are considering the molar mass of the substance. But here we have defined this Q in calories. So there is a relationship between calories and joules. One calorie is equal to 4.18 joules or we can convert it into kilos, right? Now we are moving to the procedure of this experiment. So here is the procedure which I have written over here in detail. So you can pause this video and write down in your notebook. But I will explain this procedure while we are performing the lab activity. And here is the experimental setup in which we are performing this experiment. And here I have mentioned the observation table which we have observed from the experiment right so let's see the lab activity from where we have this observation table weight of the cup is this much and now i am going to transfer 50 ml of water just to measure the mass of the 50 ml water so i am going to transfer this into the disposal cup and now I'm going to weigh this so this is our cold water and its temperature is going down it is about 30.5 degree centigrade right and now I'm going to weigh this so its weight is 48.813 grams, right? So we have taken 50 grams during the calculation. Now I have transferred 50 ml of hot water in the disposal glass. It would be better if we use thermocol glasses because they are more heat resistant but I do not have that so I use this only now the temperature increases from the room temperature as the thermometer was at room temperature and its final temperature is 45 right 45.1 now I am just going to wait for 3 minutes and I will record its temperature after every 30 seconds and now you can see the temperature of both cold and hot water so it is 30.5 for cold and 42.5 at this time for hot water and now I am going to mix hot water to cold water and here you can see the temperature is going down immediately and I will wrap this with the disposal plate and here you can see the temperature it is 35.8 degree centigrade and this is after mixing and now we are just going to note down the readings after 30 seconds and here you can see I have kept this marker over the disposal plate but this is not the correct exercise 
and the final temperature is 34.8. So from the lab activity we have this observation table and here this is the time which is mentioned in seconds. Here is the temperature in degree centigrade for the hot water how it changes and here is the temperature of cold water and here I have highlighted this row in blue. This suggests the time of mixing right so up to this the temperature of the hot water decreases and up to this temperature of hot water almost remains constant and after this we have mixed the hot water to the cold water and then we have these are the values for mixture fine now i am just going to show you the graph here is the excel sheet in which i have drawn the temperature of hot water uh, before and after mixing and this is the time so time is on the x-axis and uh, temperature is on the y-axis and in this kind of graph we have got for this hot water and the mixture of water therefore I have drawn a separate line for the water cold water fine so here is the temperature for hot water which decreases with the time and here is the points of temperature of mixture of water right so we cannot make any inference but just to have this inference we need to extrapolate this line so what this line suggests this line suggests the time of mixing so here 180 seconds is the time of mixing here i have extrapolated this line to this point i have drawn the temperature of our cold water so cold water is 30.5 so this remains constant throughout this experiment up to the time of mixing so i have drawn just one single line and this is designates the temperature of cold water now i am just going to draw a line through the points of hot water so these are the points of hot water and this line meets to this point of mixing and this point of mixing we, we are going to consider as temperature of hot water fine now after mixing we have these points so these points maximum time we made a mistake we consider this point as a temperature of mixture but this is incorrect actually so just to have the correct one we need to extrapolate a line through these points a best fit and this point on this line of mixture we are having the temperature of mixture right so this is the temperature of mixture so these are the temperatures for cold water hot water and mixed water i have mentioned the de these in details over here now moving further so on putting the values in this formula we can calculate the heat capacity of our calorimeter but sometimes we are find this formula difficult to understand from where it originates so i am just going to elaborate that so we are moving further for the derivation of this formula so here the heat gained by the cold body is equal to heat lost by the hot body so what is the hot body hot water and what is the cold body so the cold body is cold water plus the calorimeter fine so this can be written as if heat absorbed by the system is equal to heat capacity into temperature rates t2 minus t1 this is the q so if we put this value for heat absorbed for cold water and this hot water then what we will get we will get this formula so here cp is the heat capacity of cold water plus heat capacity of the calorimeter and both of these multiplied by the temperature of mixture minus temperature of the cold body this is equal to the heat lost by the hot body so this formula will also be changed to cp hot water heat capacity of hot water into temperature change hot minus temperature of the mixture and this heat capacity is uh, given in two terms cp and cv so cp stands for constant pressure as we did our experiment in the laboratory that is at one atmospheric pressure fine so uh, we have written over here cp 
rather than CV. Volume is constant for CV. But we are not bothering about the CV, we are taking it as a CP. Now, this formula can also be written in this form. So, what is this? Q heat absorbed by the system is equal to mass of the system into S, specific heat of the system and temperature is T2 minus T1. Since here in this case, the important point is to know the specific heat. So here for water we know specific heat therefore this, this Q can also be written in this manner. So I am just going to change this formula with this. So this M of mass of cold water into specific heat of water plus Cp calorimeter and this are multiplied by the temperature raised is equal to mass of the hot water into specific heat of the hot water into temperature change in the hot water. So here in this case specific heat of water is equal to 1 calories per gram per Kelvin. This can also be converted into joules. So 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. And here in this case I have just equate the Cp calorimeter is equal to mH into S into T2 my T H minus Tm where, is, where this is the temperature of hot water minus temperature of mixture minus this Mc mass of the cold water into this S specific heat of water into Tm minus Tc upon Tm minus Tc. This is simple mathematics. I hope you will be able to do this. Now on taking the common factor outside so M since mass of the cold water is exactly equal to mass of the hot water so we can uh, simply write down mass into i have taken this specific heat outside this bracket and this is my th minus tm minus tm minus tc upon tm minus tc so this i i will i'm going to solve this and then i will get the value of this heat capacity of calorimeter here I have changed this volume. Volume is in cc. So volume into dm cube. 10 raised to the power minus 3 dm cube. Into density gram per dm cube. And in this manner we are having this volume into density in grams. This is equal to 50 grams simply. S is 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. Fine. So these are the values which we are going to put into the formula. So here is the formula and here are the values. So we are going to put all these values here and uh, this is my mass of the water 50 specific heat of water and these are the temperature raised in the hot water in the cold water and here change in the cold water temperature fine fine so now you may have a question this is if the unit of this uh, heat capacity is joule per kelvin per mole then you have taken this degree centigrade so for your understanding i have written in kelvins and if i subtract from hot water to the mixture of water then i will get the same unit same value as i get from here fine so no need to worry about the kelvins and degree centigrade in this case and on solving this, I am just going to get heat capacity of the calorimeter is equal to 48.27 joules per Kelvin. Fine. Sometimes in some of the textbooks, this formula is also written in this form. So here, we, if we know the specific heat of the uh, calorimeter, then we can simply write down mass of the water and mass of the calorimeter into temperature raised in the cold water or cold body is equal to mass of the hot water into specific heat of the water and change in temperature of the hot body. So after solving this equation we are going to get the water equivalent of calorimeter as 48.23 grams. So I hope you find this video helpful and if you have any confusion you can write me in the comment section. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.